Have you ever wondered how a film tells a story? How it takes you on a journey through the lives of the characters, their struggles, and their triumphs? Well, the answer lies with David Bordwell's narrative theory of filmmaking. Unlike other film theories that look at the societal aspects of life and their applications to filmmaking, the narrative theory takes those reasons and throws them in the trash, saying that the reason anything happens in a story is to service the resolution of the plot, to answer that burning question of what happens next. This question can be answered a few ways. Uh, mainly, I'll be looking at the classical style of answering this question, or the classical style of filmmaking. Developed by David Bordwell, the classical style of filmmaking is a group style that encompasses the majority of Hollywood films released today and can be boiled down to a few main ideas, those being the story is classical. This means it follows a general narrative structure like the hero's journey, or it has a classical tone like romance, uh, drama, thriller, things like that. Uh, there's clear causality. That means one thing happens after the next happens after the next, and it will most likely be in chronological order. There is a definite conclusion. That means everything gets wrapped up in a nice little bow. Uh, there is clear motive for what the characters do, meaning the characters' motives are precise and clearly defined. Uh, the protagonists have clearly announced goals, similar to the previous one. Sound privileges, the most important things, and the music is omniscient. These two sort of go hand in hand. They pretty much mean that sound cues will precede important events and dramatic timing, or they'll be used in foreshadowing. These characteristics are all well and good, but for the narrative theory to have any substance, the story needs structure. Luckily, Kristen Thompson, Bordwell's partner, has an answer for us in the four-act structure. The four-act structure breaks down the classical style of film into four basic parts, those being the setup, the complicating action, the development, and the climax. Now, in that list, sometimes there is an epilogue thrown in to check up on the characters, see how they're doing after the story, get in touch with their mental state, but that varies from film to film and is not necessary to every classical film, but it is useful. In my opinion, there is no better place to see these theories in action than a standard American cop show. And for this project, I'll be looking at the show Castle, starring Nathan Fillion and Stan Akkadik. There are two kinds of folks who sit around thinking about how to kill people. Psychopaths and mystery writers. I'm the kind that pays better. Who am I? I'm Rick Castle. 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 I really am ruggedly handsome, aren't I? Every writer needs inspiration, and I've found mine. Detective Kate Beckett. 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 Nikki Heath. The character he's basing on you. And thanks to my friendship with the mayor, I get to be on her case. I'd be happy to let you spank me. And together we catch killers. Make a pretty good team, you know, like Starsky and Hutch. Turner and Hooch. You do remind me a little of Hooch. This first clip is the beginning of the setup. It introduces us to the classic good versus evil narrative and sets up the characters' motivations as well as their goals, those being to solve the murder case and to help Castle research his next mystery novel. Next up is the complicating action. The complicating action gives the protagonist a new goal to solve while changing the story and ultimately complicating it. In this episode, the complicating action happens when the biker gets hit by the car and the killer steals the biker's package. This changes the protagonist's goal from solving the murder to finding where the package went and why the killer took the package off the biker. Thank you. Our victim's name is Caleb Shemansky. Is that a name? Yeah, it's a name. And he was pulling a Kevin Bacon in Quicksilver when all... I'm sorry, what? Quicksilver. Kevin Bacon is a bike messenger who failed as a... Esposito, take him to school. The victim is Caleb Shemansky, an on-duty bike messenger. In these two clips, we see the main characteristics of classical filmmaking. Near the beginning of the first clip, when the biker gets hit by the car, the omniscient music changes from an upbeat chaotic song to a suspenseful tone that cranks up the tension of the scene by bringing out the background screams. In the following scene, a similar musical cue can be heard when the dynamics of the conversation switches from Castle to Beckett. 
These two scenes are an example of the complicating action because they switch Castle's goals from catching the killer to finding what the killer took from the courier. After the complicating action comes the development. Much like the complicating action, the development again gives the protagonist another goal to accomplish and complicates the story once more, this time using suspense. Okay. The security company said the Vic only had one package in his bag, picked up from 2739 West 2nd, apartment 3C, sent by one S. Nadal Matar. I ran it through the system. There's a Shakir Nadal Matar on the terror watch list. Could be the same guy. Where was the package going? 614 East 72nd. East 72nd, that's a 64 precinct. Sir, that could be an attack. I need a full tactical alert. Have him evacuate the building. I coordinate with Homeland Security. This is Detective Beckett. This is Captain Roy Montgomery. I need to speak to task force leader. Hostile 1541. Get ESU over to the pickup address immediately. All units. Yeah, this is Montgomery over 12 precinct. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip to the climax of the episode where the gang apprehends the killer. This is the climax because it ends with a clear and final resolution, as well as answering all the questions, like who the killer is, why he killed, and why he had to have someone killed. Well, 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 if it isn't Frank Davis. Sorry, pal, got the wrong guy. I don't think so, pal. I just spent the better part of a day sweating a guard named Patterson who works in the prison where Brady Thompson was killed. I don't know any Brady Thompson, and I don't know any Patterson. That's funny, because he knows you. Said that you paid him to monitor Brady Thompson's calls about a package. No, 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 no. Said that you paid him to have a life would put a shiv in Brady Thompson's back. Now you tell me how I got the wrong guy. Cuffs. So Frank was the family hitman? But more like the family fixer. He cleaned up all types of dirt for Senator Wellesley back in the day. He knows where all the bodies are buried. And which ones needed to be dug up? And then after he got rid of Olivia, with Mrs. Wellesley's orders, he called around all his low-life connections until he found someone desperate enough to cut a deal. Then why after 10 years would he suddenly stop paying Brady to do his jail time? When Mrs. Wellesley lost her faculties, Blake was granted power of attorney. Frank couldn't get the money to make the payments anymore. So he stopped figuring Brady would just disappear? And when he found out Brady had evidence to prove his innocence, Frank panicked. He stole Mrs. Wellesley's ring and hocked it to finance his plan to shut Brady up permanently. By the way, took a look at the precinct's numbers. Three closed cases puts us just over the mandated case closure rate right in time for the review tomorrow. You know what's even better than that? After 10 years, I can call Olivia's aunt and tell her that we really got the guy. Finally. And you get to give the messenger sister some closure, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't suppose having answers makes it any easier. It does. In time. Overall, the narrative theory of filmmaking is essential for any director who wants to tell a compelling story through the medium of film. Whether it's using classical Hollywood style or following a 4X structure, understanding these theories can help filmmakers to create films that resonate with their audiences and stand up to the test of time. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comment down below, and if you like the video, please leave a thumbs up. Again, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.